Coming up on today's show, Tesla has a turbulent week after Elon Musk sends an email to employees warning them the company has 10 months to become sustainably profitable. India looks to ban ICE and electrify its two- and three-wheeled fleet, and two Tesla Model 3s have a race to prove tunnels can be faster than surface streets. These stories and more coming next. Hello again. Yes, I'm back. I'm sorry we had a week with almost no content, but I've been moving house for the past week and well, you don't want to know my personal life, so let's get on with the show. Tesla stock has been yo-yoing this week like crazy after some significant doubt on Wall Street about the company's future. It's not been helped by a leaked email to employees midweek in which Elon Musk said that after recent cash raising efforts, Tesla has only 10 months to achieve break even point assuming it continues to spend money at the rate it did in the first quarter. To keep things running as financially efficiently as possible, Musk has told employees that Tesla, as well as himself, would be reviewing every single expense from now on to lessen cash burn. The Audi e-tron SUV has been given a full five-star crash test rating by Euro NCAP, the European crash testing body. The e-tron excelled in its adult occupant and child occupant tests, but it was let down a little by the performance of its driver assistance technologies, namely speed assistance and lane support, as well as its pedestrian crash tests. That said, it is a large SUV and like all SUVs, humans and bonnets don't mix. Sono Motors has announced it's now received more than 10,000 paid reservations for its solar panel adorned Scion electric car. According to the company, around 87% of its pre-orders are from Germany, Austria and Switzerland. But Sono says it has potential customers in more than 20 other countries around the world, presumably ones where the Scion won't initially be sold. In addition to having solar panels embedded into its bodywork, the Scion has been designed with flexible charging and power delivery in mind from the get-go. It's been something we've joked about time and time again, but it seems that Apple really did once try and buy Tesla. That's according to financial analyst Craig Irwin of Roth Capital Partners, who said that Apple tried to buy Tesla lock, stock and barrel in 2013 for a price of $240 per share. It would have given Apple a way to repatriate some of its $250 billion that's currently overseas and it would have put Tesla in a very different place financially. Given Tesla's share tumbled this week pushed Tesla's price well below the offered Apple price, well, hindsight is a really great thing. Ever since it burst out of stealth mode last year, Rivian hasn't been shy in taking its all-electric high-end R1S SUV and R1T pickup truck to events around the US. Last week, it took a custom R1T to Overland West in Flagstaff, Arizona. A special event dedicated to overlanding that's exploring on or off-road with a self-contained vehicle that has everything you need to live in it, the custom R1T on display featured custom kitchen powered by the vehicle's main traction battery pack. Located in the gear tunnel when not in use, the kitchen can slide out for use when it's parked up. Following its recent election, India is expected to implement a ban on the sale of internal combustion engine three-wheelers across the nation from 2023 onwards. It's all part of a plan to clean up India's megacities and we'll see the entire auto rickshaw fleet, or autos as Indians like to call them, going electric. In addition, the government is also expected to ban the sale of internal combustion engine scooters with engine capacities of less than 150 cc's, that's about 10 kilowatts of power, by 2025, replacing them instead with all-electric scooters. I recently went to see Mahindra Electric and learn how its all-electric trio auto rickshaw was made, so keep your eyes peeled for that video on this channel in coming weeks. BMW has issued a recall on certain 2018 model year i3 electric cars after it became apparent that a circuit board in the Electric Motor Electronics, or EME, module may not have been manufactured to specification. In some cases, this can lead affected cars to suddenly lose power and shut down. 
It's an issue which is believed to affect just a handful of i3 Rex and i3 BEV vehicles, and customers will be notified if their cars are one of the affected models. Recall work will begin around June 7th. One of the many challenges facing hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles is that they are super expensive to make, due in part by the complex and costly components that go into making a fuel cell stack. That cost is coming down, however, and this week Toyota's European Head of Sales and Marketing, Matt Harrison, said that he believes that within 10 years, Toyota will be making hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles that are on cost parity with a hybrid vehicle. In order to achieve that, however, there's going to have to be some significant cost savings to be made in future years in production. However, this is not the first time I've heard Toyota give this timeline. And now, it's time for short shorts. Consumer Reports says Tesla's new Navigate on Autopilot system is, quote, less competent than a human after putting it through some extensive testing. The publication states the feature cuts drivers off and sometimes even breaks state laws. The US EPA has said that it will no longer use actual or predicted deaths from poor air quality in calculating the health risks of air pollution. Now it will assume there is little to no health benefit in making the air cleaner than current standards require. GM is making a, quote, exponential jump in its onboard computer systems, launching a brand new electric architecture that will underpin all of its new vehicles. It will lay the groundwork for full autonomous driving and more comprehensive over-the-air updates. Opel has unveiled the Corsa E, an all-electric variant of its sixth-generation Corsa hatch. It shares its powertrain and electronics with the recently revealed Peugeot 208e and promises a WLTP provision range of around 330 kilometers per charge. Representative Mike Levin and Senator Jeff Merkley have introduced a bill that would require 50% of all new passenger vehicle sales in the US to be emissions zero by 2030. The bill is described as a long shot and is unlikely to make it into law, given the current political climate. US charging provider EVgo has announced a new partnership with Chevron, which will see multiple DC quick charging stations installed at five Chevron gas stations in California. The first of those in Menlo Park has already opened, but other sites will follow. Tesla has yet again changed prices on its cars in a move it's describing as, quote, not newsworthy. This time it's lowered the price of its Model S and Model X, as well as dropping the price for full autopilot, now making it the same price for post-delivery as pre. Volkswagen-owned Skoda has just unveiled the first production electric car for the brand, the Citygo iV. It shares its platform with the yet-to-launch second-generation Volkswagen e-up, complete with 36.8 kilowatt-hour battery pack and 265 kilometers of range. Audi has just opened a new 1.9 megawatt hour grid tied battery storage project in Berlin, which will be used as part of a research project into testing smart grid energy storage interaction. It will simulate the potential impacts and benefits of a fleet going electric. Tesla has reinstated free unlimited supercharging on inventory Model S and Model X cars made before its recently announced hardware upgrade. The idea, of course, is to shift any remaining new old stock so that all new Teslas sold have the new hardware. Honda and General Motors have announced that they will be working together in a joint research project designed to see what the role of electric vehicles could be on the smart grid of the future. It will focus on grid stabilization and helping utilities deal with demand fluctuations. E-Motorworks, the company behind the Juicebox charging station, has launched a subscription-based service called JuicePlan. Instead of buying a charging station outright, this service will allow customers to rent their charging station, installation included, for just 19 US dollars per month. GM is pulling its Maven car sharing service out of eight of the 17 US cities that it had been launched in. GM says the decision was made to pull out of cities where service was floundering, refocusing its efforts instead in flourishing cities. The UK government has said it will not reinstate a plug-in hybrid vehicle purchase grant scheme. 
the UK plug-in car grant had previously supported both electric and plug-in hybrids as well as hydrogen fuel cells, but from this point on will only support zero tailpipe emission vehicles. Electric scooters are, as I'm sure you all know, the rage right now, with scooter scare services in many major US cities. Now BMW is getting in on the act, announcing the e-scooter, its own last mile transit solution. It will go on sale in the autumn. Tesla, ChargePoint and EVgo are all headed to Washington DC to fight a proposal in the nation's capital that would reduce the cost of charging an electric car. The problem, Tesla says its stations are being discriminated against in DC because it doesn't offer multi-standard charging. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Blackbird, a provider of on-demand charter air services, has joined forces with Buy Aerospace to make all electric commercial flights a reality. Blackbird will buy Buy Aerospace's first 104-seat eFlyer 4S and 10 eFlyer 2S planes and integrate them into its fleet. While both plane variants haven't yet finished their FAA certification, the process is expected to be completed shortly, making them ready for short trips between 50 and 300 miles in length very soon. Because of the low operating cost, Blackbird says the new electric planes will make it cheaper to fly than drive. And finally, while Tesla has had quite the turbulent week, Elon Musk's other big terrestrial transportation company, the Boring Company, has been pretty busy pushing forward with plans to bring its tunnels to Las Vegas and showing us all how tunnels can beat surface streets. How's it doing that? With an old-fashioned race, of course. In this video, two Tesla Model 3s are raced against each other across Los Angeles, with one taking the short prototype Boring Company tunnel and one taking surface streets. I'll let you figure out which one wins. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. Don't forget to like, comment and share and bash that notification bell. We've tweaked our Patreon memberships recently to give you access to special Discord channels as well as discounts on our swag shop for certain membership levels. So if you're not signed up yet, please do consider it. We're also planning a special Patreon meetup at Fully Charged Live, so if you're in the UK, keep your eyes peeled for more news on that. And to that end, in just over a week, myself, Kate Walton Elliott and Erin will be heading to the UK for Fully Charged. So make sure you get your tickets today. It is going to be a fantastic event. And I can't wait to see you all there. I'll be back next week with more great content. But until then, don't forget to be better, smarter and kinder to one another. Oh, and as always, keep evolving.